What's up guys? This is the Awesome Nerd Show and we're doing something kind of new today. We're going to be doing our very first movie review. And so of course this one's going to be of Suicide Squad. Um, so we're going to like kind of do a short little like review like um, I don't know what you call it kind of like just a very short thing with try with, with no spoilers and stuff just so if you haven't seen it yet you can hear what we think about it first before you go see it. And then um, we'll do like a short little break and maybe uh, do something, the notion that we're going to switch over and then we'll actually talk about the movie in depth with some spoilers and stuff. So first off, we're going to do some overall reactions now. Um, I'll say what I have and then we have Bro also behind the camera and he'll, you know, say his stuff and everything. Um, and so we'll go with that. So first off, we're going to go with the overall um, reaction to the movie. And I think we both have a common consensus of this movie was awesome. Um, we both loved it. We thought it, at least in my opinion, blew my react or my um, I don't know what you call it uh, anticipation. Yeah, what I expected it to be after you know seeing other reviews and stuff like that. Um, it completely blew it out of the water. I thought that it was amazing. Obviously, it's not the best movie in the world, as um, we're hardly ever going to get that probably. But for what I was anticipating, completely blew it away. Do you agree with that, bro? Oh, I totally agree with that. It was a really well done movie. Yeah. it. They did an awesome job. Um, the characters, I thought, they did a really good job on. Um, the story was a lot better than I was expecting or had heard, you know, review-wise and stuff. <clears throat> and I thought it was a lot better than, of course, Batman versus Superman in terms of action and story character development and just overall con continuity throughout the movie and stuff um and i would say both of us i know both of us at least are read or have read or can still reading um the current suicide squad you know storyline the new 52 and stuff so we have you know experience with the suicide squad you know story of um why these characters are taken in to do certain jobs and stuff and wh how they're forced to do it and all that sort of stuff and so I think, you know, that part, they, you know, nailed it exactly, this whole thing. So there was no doubt or twisting of the story to make it, you know, fit their universe or anything like that. Um, so I think they did a really good job in all that. And so I think that's probably going to be it for our uh, non-spoiler view. So like I said, thought it was really good if you're familiar with the Suicide Squad or any of them, because there's been, you know tens of them so you know however many you don't want to say not hundreds or anything but there's been a lot of different versions and everything but they all you know have the same basic format just with different characters um so i that's probably going to be it for our non-spoiler definitely go see it obviously you'll have your own opinion um you'll enjoy characters probably hate characters you know all depends and stuff so did you have anything else to add before we switch over bro Actually, I wanted to say that a bunch of critics out there are complaining about the movie jumping around and not being consistent and just kind of having a choppiness feel to it. I didn't think that that was the case. I just did a quick count of the character breakdown we're going to do, and there's 15 characters we're going to talk about. That's 15 people you're trying to give time on screen and give a little bit of a story to, yeah. so... I, I feel that everybody's trying to say it's a bad film when it wasn't, when you look at the list of the cast. There. Yeah. Like, there's a whole lot of cast there, but yeah, everyone got their part. I mean, obviously some more than others, but that was expected. And then um, everyone got their story, you know, told. It may have been simple, easy, short, few minutes or something like that, but it was still, their background was there. Um, and com that compared, you know, with these like 15 different characters that played a part in the movie um obviously you had a lot more than that but those were the main ones um and batman for assuming you had batman superman then you threw in wonder woman and then you had the flash aquaman cyborg just small little parts but that you still felt like there was a lot missing where this one felt it was there and it was whole so that's going to be it for our um non-spoiler uh or our yeah non-spoiler part so we'll be like so if you don't want to hear any spoilers, you can um, shut the movie or shut the video off now and um, go enjoy the movie. Please do. Um, it needs a lot better recognition than it's what I've seen. It's deserving so or getting so far. So go see it and enjoy. And then you obviously have your own opinions. So now we'll start with the spoiler. 
Um, so first we're going to start with um, all the character breakdown. So um, I guess we'll start with... Let's start with Harley Quinn. So Harley. Um, obviously, or I would say the main star of this whole movie, which if you've seen the trailers and everything, not unexpected. And same thing with the um, most recent comic series stuff. She was like the main character, even though she's not technically the lead or anything, but she's the standout star. So we'll start with that. Um, so I'd say Margot Robbie did, you know, a relatively good job, as much as Harley you, you could possibly get. Um, had all her craziness and antics and, you know, doing joking and all that every all that stuff. My only problem with her is um, I feel she wasn't crazy enough for Harley. I don't know how you felt about that, bro. Um, I felt she, she was pretty good with yeah. the crazy annex and stuff <clears throat> the one issue i really had with her was her accent yeah like it'd be there in and out throughout the movie yeah. which i know for the character itself coming from the cartoon in the early 90s like that was the first time she was voiced that's where she appeared that's kind of an iconic sound for her but i feel it should have been brought to life in its own kind of like jared leto did with the joke yeah um yeah her voice i mean or like her accent or whatever you want to call it to do her voice she was trying to do the um you know 90s batman stylist um harley quinn which i mean you could kind of tell was there but it to me at least it more sounded like she was like saying stuff with like pauses in between <laughs> instead of like doing the accent type thing like it sounded like she you know wasn't i don't know how to describe it or say, to say it in a nice way, but she didn't seem like she was trying to like properly do the voice. Um, but still wasn't all bad. That was the only real problem. Like I said, I wish I would have liked to personally have seen more between her and the Joker, like in their relationship. I mean, I know this movie's not about that, but it did touch on that backstory more than anybody else's. And I would have liked to see more because just kind of did, you know, a few like minute or so pieces and that were real quick and stuff. But that wasn't, um, overall bad and i think she did a relatively good job i definitely want to see more of her and everything and so then i guess that leads us next um i guess we can do the joker next since it leads right into it um jared leto i thought he did an awesome job i mean it i would definitely say it's close to the heath ledger as in as good a quality joker i mean obviously we don't want the same a lot of people do i think we need something different and i thought jared leto provided that it was close enough to the Heath Ledger to give us that awesome feel of a better Joker than, you know, the old 66 Batman Joker or whatever. We resist all fun and jokes and not that harmful and everything. But he had it more gangster mob style to it and stuff, which was really cool that I enjoyed. Well, um, a lot of the characters did, and that was yeah. due to the director yeah. and how he likes to do stuff. Yeah, um, but I think he was awesome. I mean, he was very crazy... And out there with some stuff he did. But the whole point of him in the movie was trying to get Harley back. Or like getting Harley. Which a lot of people said his like in stuff we watched and read and everything with reviews. Said that he was just his parts were there and nonsense. I think they made sense. I mean as I said he was trying to get Harley throughout the movie. Like that was his point is to get her free her from um, the prison and um, the suicide squad and all that stuff. Free her from that and get her back with him. And he showed up, I think, at the proper times and moments and stuff to, like, spread that storyline through and everything. So I think overall he was, I mean, pretty good. As, probably as best as we could get, I think. Anything else on him? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, the entire time, every time he'd get on screen, like, the only thing I could think about was the backstory you would always heard on Jared Leto. Yeah. Like, the crazy annex he'd yeah. do to send people stuff, and then just how crazy he was, and then people actually had to do scenes with yeah. him. Like, I know uh, Margo had issues with him and almost went to HR, but then to see them act together yeah. and do those scenes, I was just thinking that the entire yeah. time. I'm like, how do you do those scenes when you have such disdain for somebody? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing. Like I said, I'd like to see the be bigger relationship of them. Like, when it shows, like, um, her as Dr. Harleen, Harleen Quinzel, 
and then him as Joker, obviously. Um, they're doing their like therapy sessions. It only shows like maybe once or twice, but I'd like to see you know multiple short things where throughout she's getting you know more drawn to him over you know time of spending with him and everything. But um, yeah, I just would like to see more of that. Um, but I guess we'll move on because got one thing. Action. One thing I do want to say about Joker is I like his portrayal <coughs> of the Joker grin. Yeah. Like Heath Ledger had the uh, Cut cheeks. Chelsea smiles, and then the old ones always had the big embellished like mouth yeah. in general. Jared Leto's was just a tattoo he had on his, between his yeah. thumb and, and pointer finger. Up on his face, yeah. That was new. Then he did that one scene where it was drawn, like he had marker drawn on his face. I don't know, it was really weird. But it was still a different take, though. Um, so I guess we'll move on now to Deadshot, which of course was the next main character. He's usually considered the leader out of the actual like villains of the group. And of course, Will Smith, I thought to me was, I, my opinion at least, would be the overall probably best character throughout the movie. Just like the way it was acted, the backstory, um, the portrayal, the portrayal, I should make that more clear, of him and stuff with the being a... Um, badass marksman and all that sort of stuff you know never missing a shot and everything and i'm um, just having will smith's coolness added on to it and everything um i just thought he played the part really well and of course he has like from his past movies and stuff had the um loving relationship for his daughter so like having a kid and everything i think he i feel he was meant for this part kind of but that's just my opinion on it um overall i i thought it was really well done uh, there were there were complaints that they did too much backstory on him and kept jumping back during flashbacks. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that was true. There were only like three of them. Yeah. And so I don't think that was too much. And they were pretty short, except for the one with Batman, which was really cool. But and considering like he's the actual like like you said, he's the kind of leader. Yeah. Of the actual group. I don't feel that it was overdone because he's supposed to be the main focus. Yeah. Like a lot of people know Harley, so yeah. they're like, "Oh, Harley," but Deadshot's more your main focus yeah. of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. So not much more to add to him. I'm just being awesome and everything. So um, next, I guess we have. Um, we'll just go with Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. I thought he was kind of a letdown in the movie in my opinion because they didn't do much on him his scene where like you know he was i would assume back in australia i mean he could have been anywhere but he when he was uh breaking into the bank or whatever it was jewelry store and then the flash showed up i thought that was really cool throwing the flash in there as well was an awesome part and then um him just being like you know crazy and always wanting to leave throughout the movie and his awesome boomerangs that he was always sharpening throughout the movie and stuff definitely made him a lot cooler than the comic versions in the past have been and stuff. But um, I don't know a whole lot about him. I've just seen him. Like I said, he's been in the mo more recent Suicide Squad comics, so I know him from that. But um, he's never really been that awesome, but he was just so he's kind of in the background to me in this movie. But what you... um, I I feel he was, he was done fairly. Uh, I feel this is a better <laughs> character for uh, Courtney. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of his more memorable characters. Um, I, I feel he was very PG in this film. Yeah. Uh, cause he has a background in the comics to be somewhat of a racist <laughs> and kind of a quitter. He, he starts a lot of stuff in the squad itself. Like he always gets people talking and gets them angry at one another, which he kind of did that in this film with, a one of the characters, but um, we'll get to that character later on, but, uh, overall, I liked his costume a lot better yeah, than any of his actual costume. costumes from yeah. the comics, yeah. but, yeah, so, Captain Boomerang was pretty good. So, um, next up, uh, we'll go with Diablo, which I think we both were talking about this after seeing and stuff, that definitely, at least in our opinion, a standout, unexpected, you know, I had never heard of him. I just saw him in the things. And when I first saw I was like, you know, who's this guy? You know, and then it showed the, you know, he shot fire. And I'm like, okay, he's just going to be there and shoot fire and stuff. But he turned into a really awesome character. Um, you know, like with these, you don't have a whole lot of the characters. But you, so whatever small parts you get, like with him, was really cool. So that makes, you know, him really cool in my opinion. Um, so obviously if you've seen the movie, 
Um, he's fighting the giant, you know, bad guy at the end, whoever that Enchantress's guy. Enchantress's brother. Yeah, Enchantress's brother, which of course we'll get into later. Um, <coughs> and he's, you know, shooting his fire stuff, and then all he just turns into this giant, like, skeleton, like, you know, ancient... Um, Aztec yeah, warrior. like Aztec, to, I don't know exactly what thing. But yeah, like a warrior type thing, but kind of like a Day of the Dead mixture in with being a skeleton and stuff. And he was he was just awesome. And you know, having a sad backstory of killing his family and stuff with the fire and everything, it just it makes you know this like revives his character throughout the movie and stuff. And I just thought he was awesome doing that giant, you know, skeleton guy thing at the end was pretty awesome. Hopefully he's not dead though. Say that we hope he's not dead. So anything you got? Um, actually, I was surprised with the amount of backstory they did give yeah. Diablo. Because there are other people in the squad that are more well known yeah. than Diablo, but they cover quite a bit of his yeah. backstory, why he doesn't want to use his yeah. powers, and at the end when he turns and he's like, I can't lose another family, so he fully embraces yeah. his powers again to use them. Yeah, that brings up a good point there. Um, throughout, by the end of this movie, you know, they're all friends and pretty much consider them each other family now. After going through what they did in the movie and everything. So I thought that was cool. Um, next up is Killer Croc, which I think we agreed was probably our biggest disappointment in the movie. Um, just with knowledge of the Batman, you know, universe and stuff like that. And the hits, rogues gallery and all that stuff. I love Killer Croc. I know Bro likes Killer Croc as well. Um, but we felt in the movie he was just kind of let down like i don't even think they really did a backstory on him at all they didn't touch any of his acting or or whatever circus performance so, yeah so that sort of stuff or how he you know got to look like a crocodile or anything like that and then his overall his body just looked weird because he had like a normal body but then this giant head and we both were saying that we think he should have been the hulk of this movie so he should have been this ginormous monster that you know would have had been just you know a destruction freak so just go around and destroy everything but then have a line or two which he did just have a few short lines because most of the time he just was grinding and all that stuff but of the lines that <coughs> make you know add some comedy or whatever to the movie um but it, yeah his just look was all weird and then i wish they could have done more with him but i think i mean is they gave him his strength and everything and stuff like that so but yeah i just wish they could have done a lot more with killer croc how do you um, yeah, like you were saying, his head was very prosthetically yeah. done, but the rest of his body was just, it felt like makeup, like, yeah. that was all it was. Um, I do like how they kind of did the urban feel with his yeah. clothing and stuff, and they, like, taped his hand like a boxer, yeah. kind of like a street fighter almost. Um, I do wish they would have <coughs> done more of a primal style yeah. with him yeah he claw at people and stuff but he's killer croc he's in comics he's always biting batman yeah. and stuff like that they did show dropping a quarter section of a cow in yeah. to feed him but it never uh, showed him eating yeah, yeah everything was him like ripping yeah. there was no like biting and stuff and he had a nice set of teeth on him yeah but uh yeah he just wasn't very primal like yeah. he'd grunt and stuff but he just wanted his BET. Yeah. Um, so next we have uh, Katana, which I thought, you know, for her story, it was, you know, as Katana as you could get, you know. Her husband was killed, and she's just trying to get revenge. Um, and he's, you know, her husband's, like, trapped inside the sword, which I believe, wasn't it his sword or something? It like, was his sword. Isn't that... it, like, Soul Taker or something? Along uh, the line? Soul Taker, Soul Eater. Something like that, yeah. But I think he was, like, killed with it, so he's inside, so she talks to it and all that stuff, and just trying to get revenge for him and everything, and, I mean, like I said, that's his katana, I mean, she looked exactly like her character's always portrayed, I mean, except for, like, super tight clothes, but, I mean, she's, like I said, as katana as you could get, so that was, you know, was pretty good and everything, I don't know if you had, um... Say so next up we have Rick Flag, which I personally don't know much of anything about Rick Flag. I mean, I know he's the official like leader of the Suicide Squad, and then in this movie he's in love with the um, person that Enchantress is. Um, I forget what you call it, like uh, 
Her alter ego. The alter ego, or I don't know what's like possessed by. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but he's just like to me like a southern guy. I mean, sounded by his voice, and he's a military man. So just there to you know finish or like you know he's given a task and he has to force these people that don't want to do this to work with him. And of course, he has control of um, killing them with their implants and everything and stuff. So. I mean, I guess he's as good as he could be as well, because I don't know that whole much or that a lot of a lot about him or anything. But um, <clears throat> I feel he was he was really well acted. Joel Kinnaman did a really good job with him. Um, I feel he did good as the leader of the squad, kind of kind of pulling them at the beginning, but then keeping them as a squad later on yeah. once a. Uh, Stuff hits the fan, we'll say. <coughs> yeah. Um, uh, I like, because in the comics, Rick Flagg does kind of have that dark side to him where he had a reason to be part of the squad. He had uh, some dark background, and they kind of dredged that up with him being in love with, uh, I think her name was June Moon, was the doctor's name, which Something was Enchantress. Yeah. In her non-possessed form, but uh, with her being a possessed witch from another planet, you know, yeah. that was his his dark storyline on yeah. this. So <laughs> I I feel that he did a good job there. Um, then next we have Amanda Waller, which of course is the overall leader of the Suicide Squad, the one that controls everything, you know, sends them on their missions and all this stuff. Um, I'd say she was perfect i mean she's the um, nick fury character she's you know not in action but then she does see action and she can you know defend herself as well as she can um obviously in like a lot of her portrayals except for newer stuff she's always a really big lady and this um i mean it's viola davis she's not that big and stuff um but then of course she's not you know the i'd say like the um skinny i'd say almost like halle berry um lady she is in the more newer stuff um, so I think Viola, De- Viola Davis did an awesome job, of course, taking her awesome um, acting skills and putting them into a action comic movie and stuff. So I think she was perfect. Um, I don't think she could have done much better at all. I mean, she was Amanda Waller. I just, well, as Amanda Waller could get as well. <coughs> I don't know if you had anything to add. Uh, she was just very, uh... I'm going to do things my way. I don't yeah. care what anyone has to say. I'll, I'll do what I have to to make sure I come out on top. Yeah. And, and she's that's, not a sellout. That, people. That's that's how Amanda Waller is. Yeah. She's going to take care of herself no matter who gets in her way. Yeah. She's there to do something. She's doing it whether you agree with it or not. Um, the shortest lived person on our list is Slipknot. So he was just kind of thrown in at the last minute. He was like really the last person <laughs> added onto the team. And as i told bro and stuff um i knew i mean as most people did he was going to be done away with soon because you only see him through a short part through the trailers and everything and of course he's the one to test the implants and he's the first one to go um like i said um i expect that with not knowing much of anything about him and then like i said not seeing him much at all in the trailers stuff i i assumed he was going to be the one to test implants and sure enough he was and so he was gone really quick. So there's <laughs> not much to add to him that he died. You never got to see any of his powers or anything. But I, I was a little surprised with how fast he went. Yeah. I figured he'd go <coughs> way through the movie, not near the beginning yeah. of the movie. Um, now, he was the one that uh, Captain Boomerang did kind of entice yeah. and mess with. That's where I said Captain Boomerang kind of came out at his best and wasn't so PG. But, yeah, as soon as you see Boomerang talking to him, you know that he's going to be the first one gone, so. Um, So next up out of our, like, main characters, we have, um, I'd say the main person through this would be Enchantress, which, of course, turned out to be the main villain, I guess the main villain throughout the movie. So um, you get her backstory that she... um, the Dr. Juno Moon or whatever her name is, um, or June Moon, whatever. June Moon. She's uh, possess- becomes possessed by the switch from like somewhere, you know, South America, temple type thing that she comes across. Um, 
And so she has this enchantress inside of her that, you know, she can, uh, by saying the name, brings around. She can, you know, do whatever powers um, she got has and everything. Well, um, she ends up uh, getting her brother released, which is a really awesome, which I would say was the, I guess, overall main bad guy because he's the first one that causes everything. But he's just this giant guy, of course, another, like, uh, Mayan or Incan or Aztec or whatever you want to call it, like, a god or something he's this huge he's like it's all he's all fire inside it looks like with like armor type stuff and of course a huge like head dress type thing and stuff and i thought he looked really cool and so that's the one you see and he has like shoots the stuff out of his like arms and stuff um and that's what you see in the movie like ripping through the train and everything so um he was really awesome then enchantress she's like doing this thing to like do something it's dragging stuff that's one thing i don't understand i don't know if i just missed it or what I don't understand what she was trying to accomplish besides like a thing to take over the world or something and turn everyone into her little minions and stuff. But, um, yeah, she just was the big baddie. And I thought, you know, she was a lot bigger than I was, or like the fights there was a lot bigger than I expected. I thought I'd be, you know, just a simple, easy bad guy that they were just going to do away with real fast and stuff. But it was actually a lot bigger than I expected. And the fight scene at the end, um, to kill them and everything was really awesome i thought they did a really good job with the fighting and stuff <coughs> um i felt enchantress overall it it was well done uh the actress did well with it um the character was well played the only issue i had was the costume for the character uh it, it was just I, I don't know where they were going with it every other character had some semblance of their costume there. Yeah. Uh, as Enchantress, there, there was no semblance. There was no, like, green. Side green. She I mean, she just had green. There was yeah. no, like, green robe or anything. I mean, I feel the new Rita from yeah. the new Power Rangers movie yeah. would have looked closer to Enchantress um, than Enchantress looked. But I think, though, with the, her brother's look and, you know, the South American, you know, society or civilization outlook design and stuff... I think she fit along with that, but yeah, compared to her, like, comic version, she didn't look much of anything like it, but, um, yeah, she was, like, turned out to be overall a pretty cool, you know, bad guy or whatever, bad girl or woman, whatever in this movie. Um, so that's it for the main characters. Now we're going to touch on some, like, people that were, um, in it for a short time. Um, so, of course, you got to see Batman in two parts, so the capturing of Deadshot, and the um, chasing after Joker and Harley and taking, you know, capturing Harley and stuff. So his parts were short, but, you know, good and everything. Um, they get, went after his, you know, two of his villains that are commonly with him and stuff. Um, I thought a cool Killer Croc scene would have been awesome, but, um, I mean, not much more than that. I mean, it's just very few parts, hardly said anything, if you, anything at all that I can remember, but not bad. Overall, uh, it's the same Batman you see from uh, Batman Superman. Yeah. The only thing I did like was they did show uh, the breather mask yeah, that he has, the which they did an action figure for the Suicide Squad with that, <coughs> yeah, and, and I think it looks really cool, so yeah. that's that's pretty much it yeah. for Batman. And then, of course, we had Flash, which was only in there for a few seconds capturing Captain Boomerang. But I thought it was really cool that they threw him in there. Um, as I said, I would have liked to see, you know, Aquaman thrown in there too, like to capture maybe Diablo since he has fire, you know, Aquaman being water and stuff, um, to capture him, but they didn't. But yeah, throwing that extra flash in there and stuff that no, I didn't know anything about was really cool. Um, I, just I, to see more flash. But I liked <laughs> it because uh, Flash and Captain Boomerang do have a history. Yeah. Boomerang is in Flash's rogues gallery yeah. of uh, villains, but yeah, it was it was an unexpected surprise that I really did enjoy. Yeah. Um, then we have, um, it was what the like rapper musician Common. He made an appearance as uh, I think he's in labeled as T Monster, but people have called him Tattoo Man. We don't know. Cause, I mean, he could be Tattoo Man. He had tattoos all over his body and, or like face and stuff that you would see. But Team Monster, whatever, of course, he was um, just in the small, like, Joker and Harley part. Um, it's cool to see Common, you know, thrown in there as a character and stuff. Um, but, of course, he gets done in by Joker. So you get to see part of his 
Joker's diabolicalness or whatever evilness of, you know, he sees Harley and, you know, says, you know, something about her. So he's like, oh, you want her and all this stuff? There is. And he's, and then he, you know, wises up quick that this is a joke by Joker and stuff. And so he's like, no, I don't want any Joker's like, oh, you don't like my woman stuff. And then he ends up killing him and everything. So I thought that was really cool. Um, of course, everyone thought by seeing stuff that he was going to be the main bad guy, which turned out not to be at all. Um, I mean, it looked like he could have been, but uh, just didn't turn out to be. So that's the way the trailer actually threw people off on like Batman vs Superman, where he pretty much knew everything that was going on beforehand. But I don't know if you had any. So there's not much added with these things. I mean, other than the fact that they kind of hyped Common was going to yeah. be in it, and then it was so short-lived, that, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. And uh, then our last one is... Uh, Scott Eastwood. Yeah, Scott Eastwood's character. I don't know what his name was, but he was just one of the um, like military guys of the Suicide Squad and stuff. So rumors have been going around that he's playing, what, Agent... Agent 37, 37. a.k.a. Dick Grayson. Yeah, so Dick Grayson or Nightwing or the very first Robin, as you would know. Of course, we got, <coughs> besides him being a part of the Suicide Squad, you know, as a military guy, you don't have any um, acknowledgments of anything else like that, which, of course, if this was supposed to be an undercover agent, you wouldn't get that. But we're almost sure, because <coughs> we, I think he's the one that... Um, sets off the bomb at the end to kill Enchantress's brother. And so if that's the case, it's pretty assumed that he's dead. So you never know he could be, since we never got anything, but by that we we'll think he's dead. So I assume he's not um, Dick Grayson, but you never know. I, I was thinking about it after we saw that explosion scene. I'm like, oh, that could be Dick Grayson, and that could be that Robin costume we saw with the Joker riding on it. But I'm like, this takes place after the fact yeah. of Batman Superman, so that wouldn't make any sense. Um, they really didn't focus on his character too much, which, I mean, with the way the DC Universe is going, who knows, because yeah. they did kill Jimmy Olsen yeah. off in Batman Superman, yeah. so... But everyone was talking that Scott Eastwood had this big part yeah. and was agent 37 and stuff i i just don't feel that was true yeah. i i feel it was just scott eastwood being a second command yeah. rick flag yeah so and being a popular name yeah and stuff. so that's it for our characters now we're just going to do probably a short thing on the storyline um i thought overall the storyline was well like it first started out with um setting up the character's backstory and you know why they're um imprisoned and all this stuff and um then, of course, the uh, setting him up into the Suicide Squad and then going out and, like, uh, like they're set up in the squad. So then there's a threat to the, you know, city or the world. And so this is the chance to use him and stuff. And um, I thought it was a good storyline. Like, um, I've heard people say, you know, it's a bland storyline like seen before. But, I mean, that's the same thing with all superhero movies. You have this um, story parts of the hero or like heroes or whatever then you have somebody turning into the villain and doing something to, to uh, threaten the world and then the team comes in and saves the day i mean that's how all superhero movies are and probably are going to be until they switch one to where it ends on a low note with you know the bad person winning until like a part two or something like that but um i thought overall the story was really well like i said a lot better than i was expecting or have heard it was and stuff and so I just thought it was a lot better. Way better than uh, Batman vs. Superman made sense and everything. And was, you know, went throughout even though it did have flashbacks every now and then. But I felt they um, fed to the story and stuff. So, I don't know what you have to add. Um, I like how they started it. They actually had a good start to it. They wanted a team to be there in place in case something happened. Such as another Superman would yeah. come along and just cause destruction that other people couldn't stop. They wanted a group of metahumans they could control. What are the easiest ones to control? The villains that have been turned in by the heroes. Yeah. Plant a bomb in their neck, and guess what? You can tell them what to do. If they don't, guess what? You blow them up. Yeah. No big loss. And then they'll test it like Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. Find out it's true. Um, but overall, I thought it was a good storyline. Uh, I like how one of the characters, they kind of were just like, oh, we'll use this character with Enchantress, we'll use her to kind of bring Rick Flagg into the group and kind of use him by having her there. Yeah. So they didn't 
they didn't really plan for her, but when they decided to use her, she hadn't been implanted yeah. with the bomb. So when she did take over and became the main bad guy, there was no bomb in place yeah. to stop her. So they had to rely on the squad. Yeah. Which I, I like that. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say that there have been a lot of anticipated movies this year that have come out. And this is the first one so far that I personally feel something wasn't missing. I left Star Wars feeling like there was something missing. It was a good film, but I felt something was missing. Same thing with Deadpool. Everyone ranted and raved how amazing that was. It was good. It was because it was something new. I felt stuff was missing. But this movie, from start to finish, I felt was good. There was enough backstory. It was just an overall good movie. Yeah. And I don't think it's justified that people are wrecking it like yeah. they are. Like I said, it's not the greatest movie in the world. We're not going to have that. Um, I mean, it's definitely not up to what I'd say the Marvel standards have set, but, I mean, not all their moves are good either. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely a lot better than Batman vs. Superman, which is the biggest thing to take away from this whole thing. Um, so I think if they continue with this, you know, format and stuff, that they'll be able to fix their universe, hopefully. And so I guess that's going to be probably it for our review. It was kind of long, I think, but um, we had a lot of stuff to talk about and want to do a full in-depth review and everything. So we're um, giving this movie a triple million thumbs up for being good. Um, and so that's going to be it. Don't forget to um, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Um, leave any comments you have down below of any characters. If you agree, disagree, whatever, we don't care. We'll hear it all. Um, um, subscribe to see more, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh